Hi guys, and welcome back to part two of the DM's Leather Tome. Today, we're working on the metal corners for the book. So, in order to add the metal accoutrement to my video, I start with a plate of brass. And this is arguably the most satisfying part of this video, but I know how everybody loves peeling plastic. Oh yeah. Oh, look at it go. Boop. All gone. So, my process for making metal inlays or, or metal pieces for this book is going to involve uh, acid etching. So, in order to etch acid in only particular spots on the metal, uh, you need a resist. A resist is going to stay on the metal and protect it from the acid during the etching process. So in order for the resist, which is in this case is going to be spray paint, in order for the spray paint to stick, you sand, you wet sand your, your brass plate. Actually, whatever plate you're using, it doesn't have to be brass. And then uh, you wet sand that to basically 600 grit. And then I use some denatured alcohol just to clean up the plate. I'm just using regular old Rust-Oleum black spray paint. And you see here I've got multiple plates. But uh, once they're all sanded and cleaned, you uh, put as smooth and as even a coat of paint on it as you possibly can. This is not the only way to do acid etching, but it's the way that works best with the tools that I have. So then I pop the plates into my... K40 laser engraver, the cheap, you know, Chinese ones that flooded the market uh, a few years back. And I basically use it to burn off the resist uh, in particular spots. You saw there a D&D ampersand. And then the, the hexagonal, I'm sorry, the pentagonal plate uh, is going to be this graphic of dice that I made. Now, um, we have our plates fully etched. I've got all of my corners and latches and medallions, as I'm calling them. And uh, just as an extra protection for these metal plates, I'm going to be taping basically the edges and the backs so that the tape basically protects the part of the plate that I'm going to be handling the most um, from any acid. So that way, if there's any pinholes in the spray paint, or if I bump the plate into something and I nick a little paint off of it, uh, the tape's going to protect that. So here I have a, a two bath system, and the basic ingredients are the hydrogen peroxide and muriatic acid, and then a neutralizing agent, which is baking soda. So out of an abundance of safety, I prepare the neutralizing bath first um, and then I I've already added hydrogen peroxide to this acid bath which basically if I'm if I'm remembering this correctly it actually lessens the strength of the muriatic acid so we, we don't actually need that strong of an acid um, so hydrogen peroxide and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please, because God knows I'm not a chemist. Uh, it, it should make the acid less powerful. Another pointer, and again, take do not do this at home unless you've done your research. Um, you want to add the acid into its dilution bath. You don't want to add the dilution bath to a container of acid, because when you dilute, or when you cut acid with hydrogen peroxide it's actually an exothermic chemical reaction and the acid actually heats up you can't see it in this video but there's actually heat waves going through that acid bath so you add acid to its dilution in order to dissipate that heat if you add the dilution to the acid the acid will boil and hurt you so there I've just etched a plate. I kind of like snapped over it, but you can see that the acid's actually turned green. The reason it's green is because the copper in the brass has actually dissolved into the acid, uh, which is why 
that acid is now green because it's absorbed some uh, some copper from the brass plate. So then I basically it, this took about two hours or, or so, an hour or two hours, in order to basically etch this brass plate. I pull it out of the acid and I put it into the neutralizing bath, and uh, I get what you have here, which is it's hard to tell now, but it's an etched brass plate. So I use my bandsaw to cut out all of the parts, uh, just really roughly. I'm going to sand them to shape later. Now, once I have my shapes, um, I basically bend the corners into shape, as you see here. You can see they're still uh, covered in paint, basically, but uh, we'll get to removing the paint later. Uh, I bend them just by gently putting them into my vise and tapping the edges over until they make a right angle, which forms one of the corners for the book. Now, in order to strip the paint off of the pieces, uh, I use denatured alcohol because it's a little less harsh than an actual paint stripper. I don't know what a paint stripper would do to brass plate, basically, but uh, denatured alcohol basically lifts the spray paint right off of the brass, and it comes off really cleanly. It's actually super satisfying. Look at that paint bubble up. <laughs> just peels right off the piece. It's pretty hilarious. And then you can just peel that spray paint right off your medallion and you have an etched brass plate, all nice and clean. So then I move on to soldering the corners uh, in order to structurally join them. Uh, I watch a lot of people solder on YouTube sometimes in some of the maker videos that I watch and it always bothers me when people blast the blowtorch right on the solder uh, really you should be warming up the piece that you're trying to solder and then you can see me do it sometimes here where I remove the heat and then apply the solder the heat in the piece should absorb should heat up the solder to the point where it gets absorbed so here's one of the latches and I've actually used a piece of wire to stick a tube onto it. I'm trying to make a hinge. Uh, and it was flying off because the blowtorch was shooting the tube away. Basically, the tube is so light, it just flies away. Um, so there I have already had solder on the piece. And I just heated it up until the solder bonded to the tube. And then, sure enough, it's, uh, it's stuck. So I have this rod that perfectly fits inside the tube. And I'm going to make a hinge out of it. So here's those small triangular pieces that you saw me uh, laser engraving earlier. And I'm using it to make a hinge. Just a simple three-piece hinge. So the solder melts. And if you take it away, take the heat away, just for a second, it solidifies and you can draw the, t the rod out of the tube. And it's now stuck to that metal piece. So that's the basic gist of what that hinge is going to look like. Now I'm using the latch piece as a spacer in order to make sure my hinge is spaced out correctly. I still had to do some filing in the end to get it to fit perfectly, but uh, yeah, now my hinge is complete. This latch is actually on backwards here in this shot, but it's just a proof prove to myself that uh, <laughs> I've made a hinge that actually works. So now I'm using epoxy to attach the various metal pieces to the book. That's not authentic. Obviously epoxy wasn't a thing when this type of binding was commonly used. They would actually use pins and they would basically drill holes in the cover, put a, a thin nail through the metal corner or, or medallion or whatever you're attaching through the cover bend it over, and then you would cover it with the inside sheet of paper of the inside cover. But uh, I didn't know that at the time of, of filming, so I did not do that. I used epoxy. So there's the back medallion going down on our pentagram. And you can see that the pentagon 
fits perfectly with the medallion I made, so that's perfect. So now I've I've gotten the corners attached. They're all glued in. And finally I'm gluing in the other half of the latches on the back cover. The latches are held in place really just with a pin on one end and a and a hole on the latch, so it it kind of is just like a pin and hole attachments, but uh with that, this book is done, and uh, and it was a lot of work, and I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's uh, check out the finished product. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is the conclusion to my leather book video, and uh, if you did like it, consider subscribing. And if you didn't like it, what are you doing here? Be gone. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace!